I think I actually predicted exactly 580000 was where this was going to settle in. And uh, that is what the show did. And I do believe it's going to settle in between 550 and 580. And the front page article right here says the uh, show had stronger than usual competition this week. It mentions UFC 290 and the uh, and MLB and MLB, you know. But I, I think to me, like, here's here's my thoughts on collision. OK, once a month when collision goes head to head with the WWE pay-per-view, they are going to get killed. And the rest of the time, I think they're going to do 550 to 580. Obviously, the uh, MLB numbers, the uh, UFC numbers, I mean, those are good 18 to 49 numbers, 0. 0.33, 0. 0.44. But I think that with, with wrestling fans, your your strongest competition is not uh, UFC. Your strongest competition is a WWE pay-per-view going head-to-head. So I think that this being a, a non-WWE pay-per-view week, being three, four weeks in or whatever we are. I think we're, what, four weeks in? Three weeks yeah. into collision? Four of I think that this is this is going to be your number. It's going to be about 550 to 580. And uh, I think the demo is going to be, you know, right around 0. 0.20, 0. 0.21, 0. 0.22. There's going to be weeks where it's lower, obviously. There's going to be weeks where it's a little bit higher. Obviously, this was a, a you know, strong main event. But uh, I still think that this is probably going to be right around what they uh, they end up doing most weeks. I, I still have no idea. This is all new to me as far as paying attention to these numbers. And obviously you throw the first one out because that really only gives you an idea of, okay, how many people, how many of our fans will tune in for the first one? And it was about a million people. And okay, that's about right when it comes to a big dynamite or when CM Punk debuted on Rampage, you know, same sort of way. So, okay, you got that. Now it's trickled back down again. And it's just going to be interesting because regional baseball, yeah, it's going to hurt when people want to watch their team or when they happen to be on Fox or on the national game. Yeah, that's going to matter. And UFC, to me, that's not a big deal at this point because that seems to be built in every weekend. You're going to be going up against the UFC. So it is going to come to WWE pay-per-views, NXT premium live events scheduled in that time frame as well as football coming up college football is going to be the the big thing and i know they touted the dvr plus three numbers there was talk about that when it came to warner brothers discovery and to me when it comes to this show collision those numbers to me are in in a way just as important as those Saturday numbers because I think they're going to tell a better story as to how many people really watch that show. You know what I mean? All right. I got one thing to say that I'm going to do raw here. And uh, that's about not just the bloodline, but everything really. You know, I, I don't really care a lot about what people say on social media, but sometimes things rub me the wrong way. And uh, one of them is when people go, you know, all Brian does is uh, fan the flames of tribalism. And uh, that irritates me because, you know what, I, I really don't. You know, putting up the ratings is not fanning the flames of tribalism. It, it's putting up numbers. Like, if you want to make that into something more than it is, you can. Bro, I'm just putting up numbers. And then it gets nutty and people are like, you know, he only puts up the bad numbers at midnight. Anyway. <laughs> God. There's an old saying, and I am old. And it is, uh, it's mind your own business. And this would be a lot easier if everyone just minded their own. If you like WWE and you don't like AEW, fine. Just watch WWE. Mind your own business. Who cares? If you like AEW and you don't like WWE, just watch your AEW. And that's it. Like, just be done with it. Really? But people can't do that. They have to compare and they have to fight. But you know what it actually annoyed me the other day? And I like Voices of Wrestling and everything like that. And I, 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 th I think it was from Voice. I can't even remember who said it or whatever, but it was something on our board. And I don't want to take it out of context, but basically, you know, they were talking about, I, I think they were like mad at people that were talking about how the bloodline is, quote, cinema. And they were talking about how, you know, real TV shows are way better than the bloodline storyline and this and that. And I've seen other people do that as well. They're like, why do people have to call it cinema? Do you watch actual cin Bro. This is, this is the exact same thing that everyone complains about with AEW versus WWE. If people like the Bloodline storyline, just can we let them? Do we have to shame them by going, you know, if you actually watched a real movie, you'd realize that this Bloodline thing sucked. Bro, 
If they like it, let them like it. If you don't like the Bloodline storyline, but you want to go watch, you know, whatever on, on HBO Max or you want to go to the movie theater or whatever and something's better, like, that's fine. Go do that. But do you have to shame people for liking pro wrestling? It's I'm, okay to like pro wrestling, it and is. it's okay to like pro wrestling storylines. One other thing real quick, because it was, a, it was a comment here that someone on the thing, they go, I showed some of my friends who don't watch any wrestling, the segment on Friday, to see what they thought, and they called it low-end community theater. <laughs> okay, listen. Bro. It's, it's wrestling! You, you <laughs> took people that don't watch wrestling, and you made them watch a segment on a show where they don't know the characters, they don't know the story, they don't know the backstory, they don't know anything that led to that. You just threw them in cold, and you said, what do you think about this segment? And they were like, oh, it seems pretty crappy to me. Well, yeah! Bro, I could... Bro, if I took The Godfather... And I randomly chose some scene two-thirds of the way to the movie. And I was like, hey, Paisley, watch this. Let me know what you think about it. And she doesn't know the characters. or this. She'd be like, can we watch PJ Masks? I mean, come on. That's that ridiculous. Head? <laughs> if people want to enjoy wrestling, why can't we just let them enjoy wrestling and their wrestling storylines? For God's sake. I get yelled at because I like NXT. And then I get yelled at that I'm paid by Tony Khan. Go away. <laughs> Mind your own business and leave me alone. Crimenies. If hey, people well, I... want to call it cinema, let them enjoy what they think cinema is. You don't have to tell them it's not cinema. Oh, yeah? Gee whiz. Well, well I guess, you know, but there is the other Golly side Golly gee willikers. The golly gee And there's G-willikers. clouds out today. There's, there's, <laughs> there are people, though, who live in those clouds, and they just want to then tell you, over and over and over and be thinking they're being very erudite about it when in fact they're being very obnoxious about it not only that it's not cinema but then there's those people that take it you know one step too far and then they need to tell you how marlon brando in the godfather could not do what roman reigns did and drop to that knee and let that tear run down his face just one tear anybody can cry a bunch of tears but just one run it's that sort of thing, too, where somebody takes it to the other extreme, and that's just where we're at right now. There was more wrestling on when I was a little kid through v, you know, UHF TV stations and the proliferation of cable. There's, there was as much on then as there is now, and there were magazines and newsletters covering it, but the thing was... If you preferred, like, the wrestling magazines to the newsletters, you bought the wrestling magazine and you didn't, like, spend time bitching about the newsletters and vice versa. Same thing when it came to most of the wrestling that was on TV. If you preferred Jim Crockett, then you probably weren't watching WWF if it was on at that time. And you and your friends might banter over, okay, who would win, the Road Warriors or, you know, Demolition or something like that. But it didn't get to the point where... People are so invested into something and they're paying tons of money and they're spending a lot of personal energy on something that's not really going to give that back to you. And they just are doing it because this is the time and space that we're in and they're having a chance to go out and fight with people that they don't know over something that is really kind of ridiculous in the end. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.